Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be working on a chartreuse board or a cutting board, if you want to call it that. Uh, with chartreuse, for those of you, it's kind of a new terminology. It's where you lay out the meats and cheeses, nuts, berries, grapes, things like that uh, for grazing, if you want to call it that. It's usually when you're having friends over. Uh, we're actually going to do one tonight. Everybody just kind of gather around the table. We talk, laugh, have fun, and that is the meal. We put out more than enough, so it's one of those, everyone actually gets full, but you kind of just enjoy hanging out and uh, eating that kind of stuff. You could use this chartreuse board for a cutting board, um, although some of the wood I'm gonna use would not be necessarily recommended for cutting purposes because some of them are porous. Um, you want to use your hardwood, so stay away from pine. I want to say aspen, uh, stay away from it. You want to use true hardwoods. Cherry is one of mine. I like to use that color for the strips, but cherry, to me, while it's a hardwood, is a little soft for cutting on, but chartreuse board, it's beautiful. I love the contrast between the colors. Uh, so for what I was able to pick out, and this might help you too if you don't have a table saw to rip the boards down to have your smaller boards like this is a one by two, which to me is more, more than small enough. You can go smaller if you wanted to for when you're trying to put them together to create the board. But I, this is a big enough board. I think uh, two inches for each strip is going to be more than small enough and still give me wonderful contrast to each his own however they want to do it that's how I'm going to do it and that's how I've done several in the past now they were out of it was I could not find walnut anywhere which is one of the boards I like to use for my dark contrast and then get my red for my cherry but they were out of walnut they were out of cherry so I didn't want to use the red oak but they had mahogany and then they had the hickory but the hickory didn't have any of the mineral streaks I normally like hickory for but hickory does have a nice little contrasting with its grain. Uh, so we're going to, I'm going to try it. I've never used hickory on a cutting or chartreuse board before. But I think this, this is what I've got um, as far as my level goes of coloration. And I, I've got, could not get one buys. And these were actually on sale for the one by fours. So I, sorry, I couldn't get one by twos in these. So this is what helps you out. If you don't have a table saw for ripping, that's kind of important. Just having a chop saw uh, is doable if you can get them in the one by two lengths and then you can cut your board to length. They, they did sell some smaller ones uh, in some wood species, but the majority, about six foot, was the smallest length I could get. So if you're in one of those positions, you have to be able to work with what tools you have. Now, I'm a little bit different. I don't just like gluing ends and trying to staple whatever the, a lot of the other companies use. Some of them wrap it on the back side to connect all the boards together. I like to use my biscuit jointer. Uh, that's to me. I use it for tables and things like that. That is the strongest way I personally know in order to put cutting boards, tabletops, uh, chair bottoms, you name it. I love that thing. Uh, and it gives you that nice piece of wood in the middle connecting the two uh, edges together so they'll hold tightly um, they can't break loose because you'll see you know if you've got cutting boards that have over the years they're drying out and a lot of that has to do with people don't realize they need to continue to use their uh, an oil uh, it's usually a cutting board or butcher block oil and that needs to be done about monthly actually uh, in order to keep the wood somewhat moistened from drying out and keeps that seal to it but uh, you'll see those flayed ends that happen on a lot of the cutting boards and stuff i've got one in there that's getting really bad because i haven't kept the seal up with it and it gets thrown in the dishwasher actually un unfortunately and i think that just kills it um, but anyway on so do some research on what boards you would like to use. I always recommend those um, hardwoods that are not open grain, so they don't have the pores for food, particles, things like that to get stuck in. Uh, with a chartreuse board, it's not gonna be a big deal. You're not cutting on it. Um, and you can 
jump into some other woods as well with a chartreuse board because as long as you're not cutting on it, um, you won't have to worry about you know knifing into it. If it's just for more decoration, don't worry about your softer woods. But anyway, I'm gonna get to work. I gotta start ripping these down and we're gonna see how far we can get today with getting these at least set up, glued together. I'm actually going to try to just get, I'm gonna get all these glued together as is and the eight foot length that they all are. I'm gonna rip down these three um, and then biscuit join all of them. And then I want that to sit for probably three or four days. I'm kind of big on getting it to sit as long as I can. Um, I mean, sev seven days is absolute max. You don't need to go that far, but uh, my garage is not 100% climate controlled by any means. I know some people would say, oh, 24 hours are good to go. Read your bottle too. Every glue could be a little bit different. So I've seen some at 24 hours. I've seen some at 36 hours. So I just like to let it, see them sit three days and continue to acclimate before then I'm gonna come through with my table saw and actually cut the boards out. Cause I'll do about four boards with these eight footers, uh, make them two foot, a little less than two foot length a piece. I haven't decided yet as far as length, this is 16 inches. I've been looking, I wouldn't mind having them 18 inches. So I may only do three boards and then add in a couple extra pieces, but we'll see where we go with it. Uh, but thank you for watching already. Um, please like and subscribe if you kind of like these videos. I do a, a lot of random stuff. So here's to it. Let's see if we can get these guys done. You guys have a good day. One thing to definitely do is get your board set up how you want them with the good face board up and then mark uh, everything aligned and then mark off where you want your biscuit to be cut uh, because you're gonna line up the biscuit cutter on these lines and so all the biscuits will line up the way they need to. I'll also have these numbered at the end so I'll know exactly how they go back together I'm going about every six inches, um, put it on my older style square, due to my big square won't actually fit between my clamps here. And I will move these clamps down as I work, get all these marked, um, and I have to do the other part of the other side where the clamps are at sometimes is not that easy. but. So one thing to remember is the type of glue that you have. My glue that I've, I use a Gorilla Wood Glue. Really love the stuff, have plenty of ample working time with it. And once it sits overnight, it's pretty well dry, but you know, for absolute uh, integrity, you know, you need to wait several days for it. Uh, for some reason, it's uh, what's left of it. There wasn't much left, but I thought it was enough for this project, but it dried up on me. Um, when they get towards the end of the bottle like that, that happens a lot and I wasn't paying attention. So I have almost a full bottle of this tight bond. Um, issue with it is you have about five minutes or less. It is very tacky not really good working capabilities with it. If you need to move anything, take it back apart. Um, and in 30 minutes, it's dry. And then in 24 hours with this glue, it is um, at 100% integrity. So it's not, not the glue I wanted to use, but I gotta get this project done. 
um, but it is water resistant and it's a good interior exterior glue. So, I mean, that's why I bought it in the first place and I've used it on other stuff and it works good. It is a tight, super tight glue. It's just really, really difficult to work with if in this case I have 105 biscuit joints to put in all of this. So that's way too much time and I would not be able to get all this together, tightened down, square, perfectly flat. So with this though, it's gonna take a little bit longer, um, but every 30 minutes, I come back and put another board on. Tighten her down, make sure it's all flat, let it sit, 30 minutes I come back, I loosen it up, put the next set on. Um, this one's, I already got this one done. Now it says do not stress joints and, uh, for before the 24 hour period, uh, but that its integrity is pretty well there at 24 hours. I'm still gonna let it, this one at least set three days before I cut out uh, my boards and then start the routing and process and stuff. So just make sure you read instructions on your glue. Hey, this is one of those learning mistakes. Um, I'm not in a wood shop. This is my garage. These are the DIYs I do. Um, so be watchful of the things you have on hand. All my lines is where the biscuits are at, so you want to make sure if you're in the same position, use the biscuits. You got to cut away from those lines. I do not have a sled for my table saw with this long of a board. It's really easy to tweak it, so I'm going to just rip it with a small circular saw, and then I will uh, nicely finish the ends with the table saw. Don't be afraid to buy yourself a large set of different types of router bits. Comes in very handy, and this still doesn't cover a majority of what I want to do as well. So, several more sets never hurts. For my boards, um, this is a drip edge. It's what I call it, drip groove. Um, I went ahead. I like the design of just going straight through, and it's a heck of a lot easier because trying to hit the edge perfectly, then come back so that way it stays contained, then you usually do a deeper one. Uh, this design here, I'm not digging deep into the wood and it's more for accents, but it does make it nice that if someone uses it as a cutting board or something on the 
charcuterie board is dripping, you know, it'll hit these edges and keeps it from rolling off. Now, obviously, if it's a lot more liquid than what the edge can handle, it's going to go all the way to the end, drip off. But um, I believe that's a quarter inch V-groove bit is all I was using. Uh, just set pretty shallow. I just wanted to make a nice, attractive line, give some character for when the oil gets rubbed on. Now I'll be switching over to 3 sixteenths. Actually, don't need any offense to that whatsoever. I was playing around and testing it. So it's a 3 sixteenths round over. This one's the eighth inch. the edge is done uh, went down did a final sand or a second to final sand uh, just want to smooth you want to go through all your edges make sure everything's good uh, I will sand probably this area here once I get done so going to put uh, just initial the last name on these boards of every couple I'm giving it to so just found some stencils and then uh, kind of did a semi-trace, copied over, uh, and then I'm going to burn this in. So I'm right here at the end, and yes, there's some holes here. Um, I will wanted to put handles on these since it's a charcuterie board more than it is a butcher block. I definitely wanted uh, to have handles on it to carry the food around. Uh, I am using butcher block oil and finish. <laughs> 